So you've got goals for this year. How do you know you're going to achieve them? What would support your journey? What do you need for this goal to become impossible to miss? Let's see how we can apply permaculture in your life to create an ecosystem supporting your dreams. Bonjour, Light Sparklers. It's Claire from Interbully Alive. An apologetic freedom for unconventional humans with practical body, mind, wisdom, and tools to create a life feeling alive from the inside out. Show notes and resources on the website integrallyalive.com. When I was a teenage, I had a dream of sailing the world. Now, I was living inland. I'd sailed just a few times and didn't really know if I would actually like it or if it was even doable. But I had no doubt I would do it or at least try. So I began to read every book I could on the subject. And this was, you know, BG, before Google. Um, then I saw personal websites from families who were doing this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not the only crazy ones. <laughs> then I started to learn sailing. And I took every chance to sail that, uh, you know, that I was offered. I went on boat building and repairing sites and talked to as many people as I could to figure out what the best choice of boat for my need was. I researched every post of boat sale. I visited harbors and so on and so forth. I did all of this and a lot more. And eventually I bought a sailing boat and I went living and traveling on it for some years. Did I plan all of this, like in chronological order? No, <laughs> really, no. I had this dream. I observed where I was in relationship to that dream, and I, I saw what I needed to get there. And I began to move right away, and I adjusted my trajectory on the way, because obviously I didn't know everything when I started. It was pretty much an organic grow. And I didn't know it at the time, but I was pretty much applying the principles of permaculture. And that is exactly what I offer you today for this next year. A new way to go after your dreams. So instead of needing external inputs to achieve them, you create an ecosystem for them to automatically grow. And there are 12 principles in the permaculture. I'm not going to go over the 12. I put you a video in the resources, which is presenting them quite nicely. And it would be a, a too long of a video to present them all. But the, big, the bigger idea behind all of them comes from the observation that the concept of what has sadly, in my opinion, become uh, the traditional agriculture like relying on external inputs like fertilizers and the like is eventually impoverishing the soil and the whole ecosystem actually. So instead, if we trust and respect the ecosystem we want to grow plants in and live with, we can make it thrive and even turn problems into solutions. And for example, the one that's most known from permaculture is using the waste in compost to nourish the soil. So in permaculture, the most important aspect of the production is that the system should be self-sustainable and resilient. So we don't nourish from the ecosystem, we nourish it and then it gives back. Nourish and gives back, it's a cycle. And that is something that we can totally apply you know, to our own productivity. And I selected the most important principles for that. And yes, as I said, they are all interesting, but it would take a long video to present them all. So I, I might, actually, I might do that. I might continue over time if you're interested though, and tell me if that is the case and I will go over them. So the first, permaculture principle is observe and interact. 
And I cannot tell you how much I love it. You see, when we have a dream, a goal, often we focus most on what we want to create, like far out, out there, forgetting to observe the current situation. So our intention setting process is often a model of mind over body and everything else, actually. And we impose impossible goals and exhaust the system. That's us. So do you know your ecosystem? Because your intelligence, like your intellect, is only one of your intelligences. Your emotions also have wisdom, as does your physical body. And you can listen to them all, as well as your spiritual, your energetic, that's your overall vitality, uh, your relational intelligences. When creating a permaculture design, the first thing we do is take time, actually stop, not do anything, and observe the ecosystem throughout the seasons. So for yourself, you've spent a lifetime with yourself, so I don't think you will have to observe yourself for one year to know how your personal ecosystem works. But the first thing I'm offering you to do and inviting you to do is not do anything. Take a moment to stop and reflect, observe on how you are using your different intelligences. Do they compete or do they cooperate? Do you take your physical body into account when making decisions? What about your emotions, your relationships? How does your intention align with them all? How do they interact with each other? What can you do to make sure they all thrive? Again, compete. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh my God. Oh la la, exactly the opposite. Not compete, cooperate. Now let's move to the actual intention setting. What do you want to create? Often we do the mistake to focus on the how too early before we really know the why. For example, is your goal really to exercise five times a week? Or do you want to become more healthy? Because if your real goal is to become more healthy, there are many ways now you can do that. You are much more flexible, you have options. And thus, you are much more likely to get where you want. And by the way, def defining your happiness and, and success with flexibility will be the subject on next week's podcast. So see you there. So while you are contemplating your year, see the bigger picture. Ask yourself, is it how am I I'm going to create it? Is it the vehicle? Or is it the how, oh, sorry, the why that will make me move throughout the year? My direction. And now you've got your big why. You will need resources to go in this direction. We are most creative when we have energy. Sounds obvious, right? So why so many of us still set impossible schedule to ourselves? Too short deadlines? plants that will succeed only if nothing comes in the way, and so on and so forth. Now, maybe you heard this quote, most people overestimate what they can do in a day and underestimate what they can do in a month. We overestimate what we can do in a year and underestimate what we can accomplish in a decade. And that's so true. So how can you make sure to sustain your energy all through the journey towards your why? What do you need, which can be different from what you want? How can you balance action and rest, which was last week's episode topic, so go and listen to it if you want to know more. And even better, how can you create and use momentum towards your goal? Find these answers, and only then you're ready to move to the how. And my advice here is to use another permaculture principle 
use small and slow solutions, which is not the topic for today. But again, I might come back to it later if you're interested, so tell me. Now, with this whole process, and especially with finding answers to the catch and store energy principle, you might have come up with obstructions and or resistances. The, the principle that comes next addresses them in a very beautiful way, and it's integrate rather than segregate. So whatever is the problem, how can it be a solution? And actually, how is it a solution? Like for example, I know people, well, first, let me give you an example from permaculture because it's really beautiful. Often we think in terms of good and bad, like herbs, like bad weeds. Permaculture sees it in a different way. In they look into what effect does this plant have on the soil. And you will find out that when there are bad weeds, they actually clean the soil. And if you let them do their work, they will completely disappear when time has come, like when the soil is ready for another culture. And that's when they will plant whatever they need or want to plant at that, at that place. So instead of losing time and energy in taking these bad weeds that will always come back anyway because they are there for a reason, they encourage them to do their work properly. They they job properly so that they can disappear and let place for something else. It's a bigger, again, it's a bigger picture vision. And so for example, in, for humans, it could be uh, people who have uh, autoimmune, autoimmune diseases, which I know a few in my, um, I've got in my clients, for example, and obviously they need a lot of rest more than the, more than um, most people. It sounds like a problem for anything you want to accomplish, right? Well, when you cannot compensate co procrastination with working harder and or longer hours, you suddenly have a very strong motivation to become really, really efficient. So ask yourself, what resistance do I or will I have on the way? And how is this resistance actually a solution and when we apply all of these principles then it becomes easy to apply self-regulation and accept feedback and also to creatively use and respond to change which are two other principles of permaculture we create our design, our intentions from these principles, but of course we keep applying the same principles all through the journey. And as a result, we continuously balance the results we want with the resources we have, and we keep flexibility to respond rather than react. So we can adapt to the situation from the open mindset of integrating rather than segregating. You know, it's, I often use the, uh, it comes from input theater, the yes and thing. First you say yes, and then you add and, and you use it your own way to get where you need. So now is your turn. Create with your personal sustainable ecosystem. So what are the steps? First, observe and interact. How are you using your different intelligences? Do you take your physical body into account when making decisions, your emotions, your relationships? How does your intention align with all of them? And how do they all interact with each other? What can you do to make sure they all thrive, like they cooperate, they don't compete? Second, Design from pattern to details. Ask yourself if this how I'm going to create it, the vehicle, or is this the why that will make me move throughout the year, my direction? We are after a bigger picture here, directions. Three, catch and store energy. What do you need? How can you balance action and rest? 
And even better, how can you create and use momentum towards your goal? And then integrate rather than segregate the fourth. What resistance do you or will you have on the way? And how this resistance is the solution? And that's it. Drop your comments. Go through these questions. Drop your comments and questions on Facebook or Instagram. And I'll be there on Thursday with the usual Facebook Live to answer them. And why we are, we are at, at here, let's have some fun and drop an emoji of your ecosystem. And that's it. That was your weekly dose of fierce love, a mix of love and brutal honesty. Boom, I just got more sparkling. Thank you for being here. I'm really glad you like it. And you know, if you want more wisdom and tools, subscribe so you will get your weekly dose and hop on my socials and share your thoughts and comments. You know, I read them and I reply with this love in the comments and on my Thursday Facebook Live. So see you there. And until then, stay tuned for the next episode and au revoir.